What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and it's time for week 10 of the Pokemon Premier League where the Yotoda City Enders will be taking on the FC Eviton. Now for the teams that were chosen for this battle, of course if you haven't seen the analysis, definitely go check it out. It's in the same playlist as this video. Um, I decided to go with a pretty standard Kofagrigus. I ended up going with Substitute, Will-O-Wisp, Pain Split just to try to take some hits and lower some HP from his Pokemon. Shadow Ball. Um, I did give it a little bit of speed just to outrun Max uh, or and rather naturally uh, slow Amoongus. Um, just in case he tries to spore me, I can put up a substitute beforehand. Uh, we have a Scarf Tyranitar with Fire Blast, Earth Power, Dark Pulse, and Stone Edge. With that coverage, we get fantastic neutral coverage against what he brought, so that was a good call. Um, I went with Bulky Toxicroak, Terra Bilo, once again, uh, just a normal bulk up. With three attacks set uh, with my really weird investment to make sure I can live all sorts of hits including an uh, earthquake from a swamper. We have floor just with enough speed to outspeed a zoom roll with the rest pumped into defense and HP. Uh, Garchomp with enough speed to outspeed a zoom roll and Drapion of course it would have to be an adamant Drapion but then the rest into HP and defense with stealth rock and dragon tail just in case he tries to set up for something weird uh, I also wanted to make sure I had a good switch in for Entei, which he actually didn't end up bringing. Uh, and then finally, Banded Stoutland with a fantastic suggestion from my co-coach Aqua Clauncher, uh, Sleep Talk on Choice Banded Stoutland, just so I have a dedicated switch into Amoongus, who can't really do too much damage to Stoutland, uh, but then I can go for Sleep Talk and hopefully get off Return, Play Rough, or Superpower where it counts. Now when I saw his team on the team preview, my major game plan was to get up Sand, Tyranitar can basically two hit KO everything on his team if there's some stealth rock damage and then Stoutland can do some cleanup. Uh, you'll notice that I did not bring Mega Law Punny. Uh, I just thought my opponent might expect that so we were going with something a little bit different this week. Uh, right in the beginning we both end up pulling a switch from our leads. He predicts me to either just go for a Will-O-Wisp or maybe a sh or Toxic Spikes or something. I'm not sure why he switched out. But I expected him to go for knockoff. Um, and so I went on to my Toxicroak. I ended up going back on the Kofagrigus because I figured an Earthquake was coming my way. Even if he set up Stealth Rocks, he had Latia, so maybe he would end up defogging them later on. Uh, seeing how little that Earthquake does, it makes me think that, oh, he's probably more defensively inclined. And then we see Curse. Now, of course, Curse does make him slower, but Mega Swamper is slower to start with. And he's going to be getting boost to attack and defense. Um, seeing that, I was worried about what his last move would be because I knew he would probably have Rest if he's running Curse. So I mean he had Earthquake, Curse, Rest, and he either had another attacking move like Waterfall in that last slot, or he had Sleep Talk. And so I'm in a position now where I really need to force him into revealing that entire move set, and I also need to switch in Garchomp at a good time to phase this thing out. Uh, with the Substitute up, I can take any hit from him, even if he boosts up a bunch. And the whole time I was also running um, a couple of cows because I actually did not foresee Curse Swampert at all. And I didn't actually think he'd bring Swampert because it would be really easy to throw Energy Ball on a Forges and have that be that. Uh, but here he is, he's brought it into battle. Um, I get a critical hit Shadow Ball, which doesn't of course matter at all. But that is the start of a lot of hacks in this battle. Um, and of course that Shadow Ball didn't matter at all because he has rest. I can't really threaten him offensively anyways. That crit may have done uh, maybe a fifth of his HP. So without the crit, not really doing any damage. I think the burn is doing about the same damage as the Shadow Ball really. Uh, I do force him to reveal rest, which is great. Um, Kofagrigus is almost back up at full HP, which is something else I need. Uh, I wanted to force him into attacking instead of resting. And if he has Sleep Talk, I need to see it here. Otherwise, he might just be running... Um, waterfall instead. But he does reveal Sleep Talk, which is good. Now we know Swampert's full moveset, uh, and that means that it's going to be a little bit easier to play around, but on the other side, I also have no ground immune Pokemon on my team. Uh, it would have been, I, I guess, this is the situation where Norvern would have been useful if I had not swapped it out of my team. Uh, my entire team is actually grounded, so that's a little bit of a bother. Uh, he does pull the double rest off of his sleep toss, which is pretty unfortunate. He doesn't even get curse or anything because he's just a mono attacking Swampert. Um, but even with that double rest that he's getting there, 
Now he is at plus two defense, I believe, plus two defense, plus two attack. And my shadow balls are basically just whittling him away. I was hoping for some special defense drop somewhere in there. Um, he is able to break the substitute on guy, so I know he'll be able to do more than 25% damage. Because I don't think an unboosted earthquake from Swamper would be able to break a substitute on the guy. Uh, but I do want to go ahead and burn him again. I want to force him into resting. Um, that would have been a good spot to swap out in the Garchomp, but I was afraid he would just go straight for the attack. Because with the burn and plus two attack, he's basically back in neutral. So if I'm going to bring in Garchomp, now's the time. Uh, I don't want him getting up any more boost from Sleep Talk or otherwise. And I know I can't take a plus four Earthquake, really. That would do too much damage. So he goes for Sleep Talk. He actually does pull Curse, which is bad. Because now it's almost a roll whether or not he knocks me out. Depending on if he has any attack. If he had no attack investment, he couldn't knock me out. But if he had any, it turned into kind of a roll there. Um, he goes for another Sleep Talk. And the game does pay him off because he got those two rests last time. He does get two earthquakes. I'm sorry, he gets an earthquake and a curse. But fortunately, I'm able to get him out of there. Uh, and I probably switch him out into the worst thing possible, which is the Latias. So uh, I would have really liked to see Amoongus come in there. It would not have even been that bad to see Thunderous come in there, because then he would have been forced to reveal his coverage. Um, he was thinking I would go into Tyranitar, and I did debate that. He had, likely has Hidden Power Fighting. But Florges is a switch into Latias all day. Um, I didn't really have a reason to go into Tyranitar predicting a psychic type attack. Um, here I did think he would switch out into a Moongus, but since that was so obvious, I just went straight for Moonblast, hoping for the special attack drop either way. That way if I hit the Amoongus, if I got the special attack drop, that would make it easier for some of my other Pokemon to take those hits. Now expecting Spore, we're going to go right out into Waffles. I do like Waffles because he does his job perfectly here, absorbing the Spore and becoming my Sleep Fodder while still having access to Sleep Talk means that yes, it is a little bit of a roll, and it's bad to be Choice Banded locked into Sleep Talk in that way, but that's okay because um, anything I hit with his moves is still going to get hit pretty badly. Uh, with the minus one on special attack, that Giga Drone still does a lot, probably due to my naive nature. Even with the Sandstorm up, that still does a lot, and without the Sandstorm up and the special attack drop, I'd probably be taking around half. I really expected him to switch out into Drapion right here, Earth Power basically does negligible damage. Um, Fire Blast, of course, I did have that on Genkai. Uh, for those of you guys who watched my battles way back when I first started my channel, I had a Tyranoboa and Fortune named Genkai. And I actually bred this new Genkai from the old one, just for uh, full circle's sake there. But since I'm seeing the damage from Giga Drain, I don't want to stay in there. Earth Power is not going to do that much damage anyway. So this is a good chance to go into Toxicroak. I know Swampert is coming back in, but I have to try to beat it at its own game as far as setting up goes. Um, the way my Toxicroak is EV'd, it can take any Earthquake from Swampert, and if I'm able to get a bulk up, I can take two Earthquakes with the HP recovery from um, Drain Punch. So I just went for Gunk Shot to kind of put him more in a range where maybe I could take him out or at least force him to recover again. The end of this game, I kind of knew when I brought out Toxicroak that Toxicroak might not make it out of the exchange. But if Toxicroak could lower Swampert's HP to the point to where it'd be very easy to revenge him, Toxicroak has done his job. Now he wakes up and goes for Earthquake. And after the bulk up, fantastic. I know the Sandstorm's going to go down this turn. I get Black Sludge. And now I get to go for a plus one Drain Punch, which should bring him down to right around 50%, hopefully. Uh, that means that I'm going to get off another Drain Punch, and if he chooses to go to rest to try to stall me out, then I'll get back up to full HP, and then I can go for more bulk ups. Alternatively, if he um, doesn't go for rest, he's going to be at such low HP that he will be very easy to revenge kill by any team member that I can bring in here. Now, it's a little bit of a 50-50 as far as what I want to go into after this. He decides not to rest, which is fine by me. Uh, I actually got up to a point where it was almost a roll, if he could KO me from there. Um, but he, as long as he got middle of the, the road damage, he would be fine. Um, I didn't want to go out into Tyranitar because I would have to guess as to what he brought in on that. I could lock myself into um, Dark Pulse, but then Drapion might come in. And I was very aware that Drapion can get Brick Break. I actually get a critical hit on my Psychic. I had a pretty good chance to knock him out, but there was a good chance of, um, not a good chance, but he had a decent chance of living that too. So the crit may have mattered. 
Um, he hits me right back with the poison jab. I definitely thought he was going to go right for knockoff. And he pays me back with poison, which is huge because based on the damage the number one this Moonblast does, um, I could have just swapped out and kept um, Forges for later on in the battle. And even more importantly, now Forges is useless. I can't really swap it out because he might go for a pursuit at one HP. Um, I, and plus, if I swap into something and he uses knockoff, I lose an item. Getting that poison there really put Forges in a checkmate position, which sucked. Uh, I go out into Tyranitar here because now that Swampert is gone, I can basically click Stone Edge and 2-hit KO most of the members of his team, but I miss it and I get molly whopped by a Brick Break. Um, of course, Azumarill might have come in after Drapion was KO'd by Stone Edge, but then I'm forcing Azumarill to choose between Aqua Jetting and trying to set up a Belly Drum if he has it, and if he does go for Aqua Jet, then I get that free opportunity to go into something else to hit him. Uh, so now we're in a very annoying position where I have to go out in Stotland and go for Sleep Talk. Play Rough does finish off Drapion, so that's kind of nice. Um, I was very leery about waking up on turn two, so I take a little bit of a chance. I stay asleep, so the Sleep Talk works out here. I'm able to go for a Return, so that's pretty nice. Able to switch up moves there despite the Choice Band. I don't get to do that very often. And he hits me with a sludge bomb that does not do very much damage. Um, so I was actually kind of pleased to see that. Now I thought for sure I'd wake up here, so I end up switching out. I actually end up sleeping for one more turn when I do bring in um, my uh, Stoutland later on. But because of the HP, the uh, Amoongus is going to get back from the Giga Drain in conjunction with Black Sludge. That means that the Sandstorm isn't really willing down like I want him to. And actually, Kofagrigus can't really touch Amoongus. I can use Shadow Ball. But between switching out and getting Regenerator and all that annoying stuff, he's going to get all that HP back. So instead of going straight for Shadow Ball, I decided to go for uh, Substitute because I figure he might try to put me to sleep, maybe, if he... Well, he wouldn't try to put me to sleep because Stalin was still asleep, but he might have Toxic or something in the back. I didn't know. Um, and that's okay because now he brings out Thunderous. And this is a pretty good position to be in because I can go for Pain Split this turn. I can basically get back up to full HP while lowering his to around, uh, take off a good chunk there, maybe 25% or so. Um, I get my rest restoration, and now I get to go for Pain Split again, which is going to hurt him a lot more if he goes for Dark Pulse. He does go for Dark Pulse, I live it very comfortably, but I get flinched, and so I'm not able to lower his HP, plus if I had gotten the Pain Split off, I would have been in the position to live another Dark Pulse. Um, so Kofagrigus goes down because of that flinch, and that sucks because I could have taken him out with a Shadow Ball. Um, at this point in the battle, it's very obvious he has likely a Scarfed um, Thunderous. And so the battle is basically over because I have a Sleeping Stotland that has to lock into a move, and it's not very fast anymore. But I would have at least liked to lower the score. Uh, I was only at a minus one before the battle, but now this basically undoes all the work that my team did against Parasect Germain last week, so that was a little bit unfortunate there. I think the hacks played a little bit of a part, but at the same time, he also brought some Pokemon that I wasn't expecting him to bring, so it may have balanced out. I really, really think I could have at least lowered the score a little bit more if not for the hacks, but that's okay. We have one more battle for the Pokemon Premier League, and that's going to be against the Osaka Eevees, so definitely tune in for that. And um, let me know if you thought that the hacks played a, a major role in this battle. I kind of go back and forth on whether it did or not. If more than anything, it was more um, kind of, it, it impacted my morale after the battle. Cause it's like, when you have a really good battle and hacks doesn't play a huge part, it's like, okay, yeah, I played a good job. But here, um, I know Kino is a great battler and I, I really wanted to have a, a much more clean match with him. Cause this was a pretty important match depending on who else lost this week actually may end up slipping down into relegation. So um, I would hope to stay above that little relegation line. I need to definitely make sure that we come in strong against the um, Osaka Eevees next week. But um, yeah, this it's just gonna be an interesting end to the Pokemon Premier League. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you all next time. See you later guys, bye.